Then in your apology, you said, well, I wasn't really educated on these things. I'm... Yeah. Um, but it sounds again, like you're kind of taking that back Again, and they, they messed with the wrong girl. I hope you never said anything wrong in your life. I have a huge team. Uh... We're coming. In this video, I would like to direct your attention to something that we can study. Just Pearly Things made statements that offended the black community and also that offended the Jewish community. She went on a black platform and spoke one way to the black people and then she went on a European platform and spoke a completely different way to the I want you to watch both of these videos and look at her responses to both people and tell me what you think. Um, greetings, Pearl. Uh, Hi. Uh, my issue mainly was I did want an apology, so I do thank you for at least doing that. Um, I do want to talk about the optics of two younger whites continuing white supremacist talking points. And do you really, are you saying sorry because it is backfiring? to your audience or are you just saying sorry because it's the right thing to do because I, I i want you to understand that you're 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 in the entertainment industry but it's a unique industry that men are looking for help they're vulnerable and they're more than likely to repeat certain talking points that you may have um, I was saying sorry because I regret not preparing better for that. Um, and I regret some of the things I said in that interview. So you're not sorry because you made a statement about ratchet, I mean, I'm sorry, slavery? No, that's one of the things that I said during that interview. So, sorry, go ahead. Well, I just, because the issue that, like I said, the optics of you, two white younger people talking about slavery and right. Holocaust mm -hmm. to an audience that is open to influential behavior. Do you, right. like, I would, I would mm -hmm. like an apology about that because I mm -hmm. think that's the point that, because mm -hmm. let's be honest, in this world, we're trying to eradicate a lot of things, mm -hmm. the ills of society. Mm -hmm. And I just think you're just another case of continuing the white supremacy talking points. It's just, you just, mm -hmm. you, I don't think, do you understand that? Or I'm is just, it just what, what are we, I'm just confused as to what we're disagreeing on. Um, Cause I, I thought we were on the same page. I said, I shouldn't have made those remarks. So I'm just confused a little bit. You said you shouldn't have made it, but do you understand why you shouldn't have? You, you oh, shouldn't because, have made it because it, it messes up the bag and is going to make a lot of black people mad, or are you just mm -hmm. saying I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have made it because I wasn't qualified and it was incorrect, and I never want to spread misinformation on my show. So, but this gentleman is a type is a type of person that is expressing that he was bothered by what she said. Look at how cold her response is. There's no regret. There's no sympathy. There's no contriteness. There's nothing in the statements that she's making. And the look that she even has on her face is not a look of, I'm sorry for what I did. It's a look of pride. Her whole, look at her whole demeanor while she's talking to him. She's not talking to him like she's sorry for what she did like she actually has respect for the people like she needs to change something she's talking to him like yeah okay whatever that's how she sounded throughout this whole thing now contrary look at how she was talking when she wasn't speaking to black people on the trigonometry podcast you want yeah but him telling your italian friend she shouldn't be dating a black man mm -hmm. that's right the racist part mm -hmm. don't you think mm -hmm. Um, I'd have to remember what he said in the clip, but maybe, yeah, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. so that's why I'm asking you because you, you do have controversial guests, as we do, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with talking to people who are controversial, but Nick Fuentes is a very different kettle of fish, as we say here, right? Yeah, um, my, my opinion is that he was polite overall. Um, he was a good guest. 
He was also denying the Holocaust, from what I remember. Look, yeah, I'm not with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep me out of that one. I'm not with the race. Like, that's not my thing. But I just think people are allowed to have their opinions. So if he has crazy opinions, let him have his opinions. And I think he, he should be allowed to talk about it on the podcast. Now, they're questioning her about the Holocaust. They mentioned slavery, too. Don't get me wrong. But they focused more on the Holocaust. And look at how she's reacting. But isn't it also the duty, Pearl, of the person interviewing them to push back on those opinions when they come up and actually challenge them and investigate them and to basically push back on it? Yeah, I mean, we could do another show where we push back more. It's not the end all be all. But surely that isn't that the risk, isn't that- I the... wanted to do like one with Dr. Umar, but he didn't want to come. Um, who's Dr. I don't know who that Dr. is. Dr. Umar has like the same opinions as Nick. Like he doesn't believe in race mixing too. He's just black. Yeah. Mm. It's like a common... Yeah, yeah there are some people who believe that, sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, when you were talking about the Holocaust with him, he was saying it's like slavery, it got embellished, and you were sort of going, mm, I, can, I can see your point. Mm -hmm. And that's why I found it a bit confusing, because mm -hmm. then in your apology you said, well, I wasn't really educated on these things. I, yeah. Um, but it sounds again, like you're kind of taking that back Again, um, there is a statement coming out on everything, so you guys just have to wait for it. Yeah, I well, I just, yeah. From our perspective, we're kind of saying to you what we thought you might have said to him, which is if a guest says or does something controversial, you kind of want to ask and find out why they've done that. Now, you're seeing two different sides of her. On the one side, she has an expression on her face like she doesn't care. And on the other side, when they're bringing it up, there's fear on her face. You could argue whether or not she expected to be asked those questions. She knew she was going to be interviewed. So it's hard to believe that she didn't think that she was going to get asked those questions at all. She, ha she had to have known there would be some possibility. But the point is, look at how she's answering it. She doesn't have that I don't give a damn face on at this point. You, you see fear in her eyes. Her voice is getting low. Her whole reaction is different. And why is that? The reason why, obviously, is because of what she said earlier. Disclaimer, I don't agree with these views that she's making. I'm simply educating the public on what she said and documenting it. If they attack the Jewish people at all, they'll say you hate. But the difference is, is that Jewish people have more power. And they can, it seems like they can make your life hell. Yeah, that's, ex yeah, that's but, exactly right. But it's... That's what I believe is going on here. In my opinion, she only respects power. This is how bullies act. Bullies don't have sympathy for someone that's not as strong as them or as powerful as them. Bullies look at you as someone that they could take the advantage of. And a bully does not back up unless he's faced with someone that can beat him or someone that can defeat him. It's similar to how when you look at the United States and they'll go and invade a third world country, bomb them and take their resources and make up an excuse why they're going there. But they don't invade countries that have a nuclear arsenal. They don't invade countries that have the power to fight them back. Even though they, even though they are more powerful, the fact that there's enough ability to harm you and to do damage to you is a deterrent for you not to go there. This is what I believe it is like with her. She, when she's on the black people's platform, she feels like she doesn't have to be as careful with how she talks as when she's on this platform. Someone who used to work with Pearl, Sarah Garvey, said that he saw her being a bully. Based off of what I'm seeing here, I believe him. Okay, what I saw, the longer that I started to work with Pearl, is that she had a colonizer's mentality. And she started treating people disrespectfully, taking money from people. And I was like, wow, that is really bad. She tried to do it to me. And then after that, she starts popping. Oh, I'm going to war with everyone. She says that she is not taking this lying down, that there's something coming. What inspired this? Mm -hmm. Or what inspired this change? I feel like there's a lot of people that are spinning a narrative and that's not true. And I feel like there's a lot of people that have been talking about me for months and months and they just sit there with their keyboards waiting for me to slip up and i'm tired of it wow. so i'm coming uh, I'm you're gonna coming have back. a rebuttal huh that's what we call it in the law <laughs>
rebuttal. Yeah, and they they messed with the wrong girl. I hope you never said anything wrong in your life. Wow. We're a huge team. Uh, We're coming. Oh, oh, I'm going to war with everyone. No one, as if no one can come for her. As if she's this big bully on the block. So I'm like, I don't like seeing people get bullied. I'm one of those people that I'm cool and I can sit with people that are quote unquote cool. But if I see you trying to bully someone, I'm going to be like, yo, that, that's not cool. But if you're going on like, you know what, fuck you, I'm the bully. I'm going to be like, you know what, sometimes the bully needs to get bullied. I agree. To everyone that left me comments, to everyone that gave me pointers in the right direction, I could not have done this without you. Thank you so much. And a big shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson for shouting out my channel. I thank you so much. Another big shout out to Sarah Garvey for sharing my video. I really appreciate it. It's the King Lemuel podcast. Guys, leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this. I've got some great stuff coming up for you guys. Just stay tuned. Peace.